We were raised under gray sky But you'll never hear us complain Oh, and Father led with examples Of how to draw beauty from pain Morning ladies and welcome back. So today what we're looking at is um, two Galatians verses 20 to 21. So we're going to need uh, some supplies today. So some I have pre-made. So I've traced out the drawing in which I want to trace onto the Bible journaling page just because I find it helpful. Um, and then you can see I've drawn the cross on, but actually I've used paper and just cut it out of a wood kind of effect paper um, to give it the look of the cross. Um, and then I've drawn tags, but what I decided to do, as soon as I was cutting out paper, was um, cut out hearts. Now I've chosen um, two kinds of sets of colours, so I've chosen quite bright and vibrant colours of the gifts that God gives to us. Um, and then the grey ones are the things that we talked about putting down and um, giving back to God and not holding on to. So you'll see from some of the ones that are quite colourful, we've got accepted, love, chosen, future, special, set free, um, adopted, but we can go through that a little bit later. Now, what you're going to need in order to trace this is some kind of um, micron pen or black pen, anything will do. Now, ladies, I'm using a um, light box here, but again, um, remember Trace Table app, I think it's 99p to download, and you can use an iPad or tablet like a light box. Now, I don't know whether you will choose at some point to do a Bible journaling page um, where you've already done one side of the page and now you're doing the other. Now, that makes the tracing part a little bit more tricky, as you can see here, because the light shines the image on the back page through as well as the image you're doing. Now, I've sped this up really quickly um, because I think it probably gets boring watching me trace. Um, but you can see I drew the image of um, a uh, lady and the jar and I'm now going to use a um, glue pen to stick down the cross. Now I've got a love-hate relationship with these glue pens. Sometimes I really like them and sometimes I don't. It leaves a blue colour on your piece of paper and apparently it's meant to go clear and that's the most optimal sticky stage not quite sure but i some days i really enjoy using them and other days i struggle a little bit now we're going to uh, thank gail for the coloring of this image now um one bible journaling session gail was painting with ink and that's a concept that had never come across me or Kerry before so I'm just going to show you really simply here um how I've done it um and hopefully I've done it right Gail but you just use a little bit of acetate and stamp um a bit of the colour down from the ink pad on the acetate using a little bit of water to get it a bit more durable and then you can simply use it a little bit like you would um like a watercolour it has the same kind of effect same kind of feel um remember when you're stamping the image on the acetate you're going to need fair amount of pigment so if it's really really light on the acetate and you haven't got much ink on there you're not going to get the bright and the vibrancy of color that you're desiring but remember not all of us will have inks at home so if you've got um coloring pencils pens um any kinds of paints that would equally work really well to just add a little bit of colour to your page. And again, ladies, this is all about having fun and spending time with God, spending time in our Bible. So choose however and whatever means you've got in order to uh, get stuck in and get creative. Now, I'm going to read um, the verse that I looked at for this image today. 
and that's two Galatians 20 to 21. And what that says is through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. And I think it's that kind of thinking. It was, I guess, the reason why this verse really stood out to me was a few things. It was that um, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's not, they're not saying here that he gave himself for us. They're saying here he gave himself for me. I feel like this is like directly speaking into each and every one of our lives. And I think sometimes that can be really hard to feel like that that's true for us. We can say, yep, yeah, no, that's true for that person or that person or, or that person over there, but really struggle to say and accept that that is true for us. Um, and then the other bit that um, are, just stands out to me is um, I do not set aside the grace of God. God says that you are loved, that you are worthy, that you are forgiven. And what it says here is Christ died for nothing. If we can't believe that, if we can't believe that God's given us grace and, and loved us, then then Jesus died for nothing. Jesus' death changed nothing, but it changed so much, so much for each of our lives. So you can see here that I've done these grey hearts. Now, these are things that I wanted to represent the things that I carry and I hold on to. And I know we've talked a little bit about these. Um, so what you can see here is uh, some of the words that I've written, personally for me, a hurt, guilt, anger, worthlessness, shame, invisibility, invisible. And I guess the thing that, and again, I'm just using the glue pen to stick these down because I wanted these to appear as if I'm attaching them to the cross because I'm going to walk away with the jar and attach these to the cross, which again is a daily chore that I have to remind myself to do. And we've been talking a bit about Brene Brown and Brene Brown really talks about living in scarcity. So never enough, never good enough, um... So it's thinking about when you wake up in the morning, um, I didn't get enough sleep. And then you go through your day, I didn't get enough done, I wasn't good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. And then you go to bed and then you go, all of those tapes just play through. It's that living in a um, negative mindset, I guess you could say. And I guess the thing that I often come back to around scarcity is, I guess, that worthlessness or that not good enough um they're tapes that play quite frequently and quite loud in my head and I don't know whether anyone else will get that or understand that but sometimes it feels like the voice inside my head um is so loud that it overpowers my ability to rationalize or think um think with that wise mind I guess um, to be able to 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 distinguish it from uh, what my mind's saying and what is reality. So um, I guess this is why I really wanted to um, have these as quite a, a muted colour, because I wanted to demonstrate that these are things that don't enrich our lives, they don't um, aid us to live freely. These are things that drag us down and hold us back and if I'm really honest with you ladies most of the time I find life a chore and a battle and something that has to be endured and and God doesn't want that for us God wants us to live freely and to thrive in this life and he's thinking about how we do that 
Um, so you can see here I've done the lighter colour um, words and these are words that God's promised to us and these are words that biblically throughout your Bible you will find that God has said about us and spoken over us. So I'm just going to read some of them out. So some of these says um, protected, valuable, his child, beautiful, forgiven, accepted, not conditionally but unconditionally, loved, again, unconditionally, not because you will do anything or you have done anything, not because of who you are, just because he loves you. Chosen, you have a future, you're special, you're wanted, you've been set free, you've been adopted, and you're never alone. And I guess it can be hard, can't it, when those those internal beliefs, that internal voice is so powerful and so overwhelming to to see when you're feeling it say you um are feeling in that place of worthlessness to suddenly believe that you're accepted that you're valued that you've been chosen can be really tough because they're almost like contradictory of each other aren't they and they sit on polar opposites and and different sides to one another but i think what the battle is it's being able to hear that voice so um i think it was kerry but kerry once talked to me about a term it was definitely kerry um where she said there are some thoughts that just come and go from your mind and then there are others, um, even regardless of how pleasant or unpleasant they are, that come into our mind and we build them a house, give them a really nice bed, give them a blanket, tuck them up all nice and warm, and almost to a degree play with the the thought. Um, and it's not that we necessarily want to feel that way, but... When your reality and when your message that persistently and consistently is, say, worthlessness, um, that to some degree is more palatable than trying to believe the truth that you are valued, that you are accepted, that you are chosen, that you are special. And I think that's the difficulty that the things that drag us down and wear us down and 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 keep us in the shadows of life because of the internal core messages that they are they're more palatable because we know where they sit we know where they put us we know how they make us feel but to suddenly try to change that that narrative and try to change that understanding that we are loved, that we are beautiful, that we are his children, that we are valuable. And these are all things that God gave us and gives us every single day. Is hard. And I think it's lovely. I think it's it, it's such a blessing that our God, our Father, chose each and every one of us each and every one of us to to have and hold a relationship with him and he desires that so greatly ladies he desires to be in connection with you so so greatly and all of these things he absolutely looks over you and and desires you to hold and desires you to to take away because he doesn't want us to live with the hurt and the anger and the guilt and the anxiety and the invisibility and the shame and the worthlessness or whatever it is for you. He wants us to live with the words that he said, that he laid down for us and that he gave us. Ladies, if you're anything like me, you'll be saying, oh, that sounds really good and sounds really lovely, but it's a lot harder to do in practice. And you're right, it really is. But the thing is, it's a daily battle and it's a daily choice 
that we have to make to hold on to the truths that God has spoken into each and every one of our lives. Kerry's now going to call us into prayer. Loving Father, please grant me the peace of mind and calm my troubled heart. Give me the strength and clarity of mind to find my purpose and walk the path you've laid before me. I trust your love, Lord, and I know that you will heal my distress, just as the sun rises each day against the dark of the night. Amen. We hope you can find God's truths in your lives this week. We love you, we miss you, and we hope to see you soon. Bye.